What's going on, guys? Tower number nine here with another Star Wars Unlimited gameplay commentary on Super Showdown Poznan. Uh, shout out again to Sklad Gear for hosting this footage. Uh, you can see their logo uh, over to the uh, over to the left of my face cam here. So they are a store in Poland that ran this event and also hosted this stream. I'm adding some uh, English language commentary here to. Uh, Hope, uh, hopefully, help people uh, understand the understand these games a little better. Figure out what's going on and uh, provide a little bit of analysis and so on. Um, this time we have a match between um, Mikal and Mateus. Uh, again, my apologies if I mispronounce people's names, the names of the events, uh, anything like that. I do not speak Polish, and I apologize. Uh, this time we have a Command Sabine versus Command Boba matchup, and it's a little interesting here at the start because it looks like uh, I'm not actually sure what's going on here because it looks like Mateusz has played a Mateusz. I'm sorry, Mateusz. I'm uh, not. I'm not going to do great with the. I'm not going to do great with the with the pronunciation. But anyway, um, it looks like Mateusz has uh, already sp put down two resources and played a crafty smuggler while his opponent has not resourced yet don't entirely know what's going on with that it is a easy mistake to make to uh get started on your play before your what the heck get started on your play before your opponent has resourced um not entirely sure I guess he drew cards for the next... So it looks like Mikal missed his first turn play and then started actually drawing cards for the next turn before the turn was ended or something. I'm not... Yeah, missed his first turn play. I don't... I don't entirely know what they're discussing here. Someone else is going to maybe shuffle the deck or something. It looks like a third party has picked up Mikal's deck. Maybe because he saw those cards from the top, or maybe he drew too many cards or something in one of those in one of those moves. It seemed like maybe he had drawn. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Something odd going on. But in any case, uh, this is a strong start for Mateus. Um, because, yeah, you really don't want to be missing your turn one play as a Sabine player. Um, in fact, that's extremely, that's extremely bad. Um, he's thinking about resourcing. And it looks like McCall also did not use Sabine's ability. So we don't have the damage to bases. Fighters for Freedom being played here as his first unit. So Fighters for Freedom is a three cost three, four. Um, it has Saboteur, and when you play a Aggression card, it deals one damage to the opponent's base. Um, Mateusz opting to hit the base with the Crafty Smuggler rather than attacking into the Fighters for Freedom. Uh, McCall takes the initiative, and let's see what we have here. Maybe a Waylay to answer that? Yep, that's exactly right. Normally, you would probably want to have the Crafty Smuggler fighting the uh, Fighters for Freedom there. Ooh, nice. And he gets the Boba reaction there, getting an extra resource and using it to play Greedo. Mateus is now far ahead with McCall missing his turn one play and his turn two Fighters for Freedom being pretty cleanly answered by Mateus. Uh I don't think our Sabine player is in a good spot for this one, though, of course, we'll see what happens. Like There is the potential for a comeback, at least. A green Squadron A-Wing hitting the field in the Space Arena. It may be that McCall has decided, you know, this ground arena is going badly for me. Time to pivot to space. Uh, the Crafty Smuggler swings in for another two damage to base. <clears throat> and McCall then plays an Alliance X-Wing to go with his green Squadron A-Wing, bringing, uh, bringing out the space fleet here. Looks like Mateusz is holding a surprise strike in hand, which would allow Greedo to defeat Sabine immediately once she deploys. Probably not what McCall would most want to see. Uh, 
But in this case, uh, Greedo ends up just hitting the base instead. I think that's honestly a pretty reasonable play. Mateusz is actually winning the aggro race here, and he may have some other answer for Sabine. Yeah, so a uh, cartel spacer exhausting Sabine. Um, and McCall then takes the initiative. And it looks like there's an overwhelming barrage in hand there for Mateusz, which should uh, make this situation a lot simpler. However, McCall has a little trick of his own. There is a... I believe there's a Steadfast Battalion waiting in hand, which could potentially be used to ambush and defeat Boba once he deploys. Um, let's see whether McCall can get back in this game somehow, whether that be via the Crafty Smuggler or some, or whether that be via the Steadfast Battalion or some other route. Oh, very interesting. He is opting to use the Steadfast Battalion now, not going to try to kill Bobo with it, but instead killing Greedo. This does do six overwhelm to the base. Or no, it only does four. I guess he's neglected to use the on attack ability, or maybe he used it to buff one of his other units. I'm not sure. Greedo misses the top deck. Did he use that to buff Sabine, maybe? It wouldn't be totally crazy to buff Sabine. It would make it less likely that she could be removed. Get her out of surprise strike range or whatever. It is possible he also just missed his on attack trigger. So the Steadfast Battalion is a 5-5 with Overwhelm. And on attack, if you control a leader unit, you may give a unit plus 2 plus 2 until the end of the phase. And, that, and it, it is a unit, not another unit. So that ability is very commonly used on the Steadfast Battalion itself to bring it up to 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, but, but in this case, it doesn't seem to have been used there, and I'm not sure whether it was used on a different unit or whether it was forgotten. Interestingly, the surprise strike used by the Cartel Spacer, um, taking out Green Squadron A-Wing there, a bit of a surprising play. Yeah, okay, and then Sabine hits the base there for five, so I think, I okay, so that makes sense. So the buff... The buff was given to Sabine there, which actually took her out of range of the surprise strike that otherwise could have defeated her from the Crafty Smuggler. So while I do think it's a little unusual to use the buff in that way, it ended up actually saving, perhaps saving McCall the opportunity to swing with Sabine. The only problem there, well, I don't know. Arguably, I think you actually prefer having the ability to swing with the A-Wing than Sabine. There's an interesting dynamic in these Sabine decks where if the opponent defeats Sabine, that actually is somewhat to your advantage because it means that you can start using Sabine's leader ability again to put more damage on their base, whereas if they defeat a normal unit, that option isn't uh, available. Crafty Smuggler takes out... Um, the Crafty Smuggler takes out the... Uh, the damaged Steadfast Battalion, and McCall plays a... That's going to be a copy of Metal Ceremony, giving... Uh, so Metal Ceremony is a zero-cost card that allows you to give an experience to up to three Rebel units, but it only works on units that have already attacked... that have already attacked this turn. Boba swings in to Sabine, doing four damage, but taking five back. A rare situation where Boba is actually in a negative... Um, Rare situation where Boba is actually in a negative uh, exchange with Sabine. Normally, Boba is much tougher, and is the one to be uh, is the one to be doing more damage if those two fight each other. But with the plus two plus two from the Steadfast Battalion and the experience from that medal ceremony, Sabine actually hits Boba back for five. You know, after a bad start, McCall's McCall has been. Uh, or Michal, whatever, I'm sorry, uh, has been in a substantially better position. However, we do see the overwhelming barrage now on Boba for six total damage. So four, oh, and that is exactly the amount that he needs. So the six damage allows him to do four to the X-Wing, two to Sabine, Sabine off the board. And that's probably going to be game... But we'll see. There is a chance of a comeback. But I, I just think with the board wiped and Boba having three units in play, it's going to be tough for McCall to come back. 
Michal, Michal, I don't know. Okay, okay. The Echo base defender deploys. That can at least hold off the ground arena to some degree, but we'll see whether Mateusz has an answer. And it's going to be a steadfast battalion of his own, ambushing, buffing itself, I believe. Uh, so if it if it buffs itself, or no, it looks like he's actually opted to buff the crafty smuggler there. So then the uh, the steadfast battalion gets two overwhelm through onto the base, defeats the echo base defender, and is still alive with four HP. And then we we see a fleet lieutenant played and picked off by the buffed crafty smuggler. Uh, the buffed crafty smuggler is technically still alive with three damage on it, but will be defeated once the temporary buff wears off. Sabine's ability used for uh, this... Is this the first time in the game we've seen it used? It might be. One to each base. Uh, Mateusz swings in for six more damage between his Boba Fett and the Cartel Spacer. The Crafty Smuggler is now defeated, but I don't really see an out for, uh, for M Michael here, Michal. Yeah, I, th I think that's just game. I think he, um... I think yeah, I don't I don't see I don't see an easy way out. So the um another echo base defender uh desperately trying to hold back the uh hold back the tide here, but I think it's not gonna work out. Cartel spacer in for two more damage. <clears throat> yeah, there's an overwhelming barrage in hand. This is pretty over. K2 hits the field. Overwhelming barrage up to seven defeats the i think he just does all the damage to the echo base defender because there's no if you kill k2 i mean there's no real point in doing this i, I guess he can do it just to do it. it doesn't it doesn't really matter um and looks looks like uh looks like uh, like michael sees the writing on the wall and scoops uh instead of trying to pronounce a name that i am almost certainly pronouncing wrong i'm just going to start calling him michael i apologize for the uh I apologize for the linguistic difficulties that I'm having here. Uh, <laughs> okay. So that was a pretty tough, uh, pretty tough situation for Mate for Michael. Um, missing your turn one play is something you really, really, really do not want to do with Sabine. In fact, even just playing a turn one play that your opponent counters is super negative with one of these decks. I have come back and won after that start, but it is really not where you want to be. Um, you, Wow, that's so weird. It looks like there's a... What is that in the sideboard? Was that a Force Lightning? I'm not sure what that card was. Maybe, maybe it was just something. Maybe it was a Power Failure. But the players are sideboarding here in between games. Uh, so for people who might not be familiar with the concept of sideboarding, in these best of three matches, the way that it works is you have your main deck, uh, 50 card minimum, but you also have a 10 card sideboard. And in between the games, you can choose to bring in cards from your sideboard and remove cards from your main deck as long as both of them are in a legal configuration afterwards. So the way this is commonly done, because I think most players are trying to play the minimum card count, the way this is commonly done is players will swap out sideboard cards um, f or swap out main deck cards for cards in the sideboard. So for instance, if I'm playing a, you know, if I'm playing my Iden Red deck and I'm playing against Sabine, I might well swap out some of the end game units in favor of things that will help me more in the early game since I know the core question in that matchup is going to be whether I can stave off the early aggression. All right, both players resourcing. Or rather, both players thinking about what to resource. Looks like there is that a battlefield marine in hand for Sabine? If so, that's a great starting play.
Okay, so Michael gets to go first this time. Uses Sabine's ability to lead off. One damage to each base. Not always what you want to do, I think, because it does lose some tempo. Crafty Smuggler. And then the Battlefield Marine. This is an opportunity for a blowout for Mateusz. If he has a shoot first, he can kill this, uh, kill this, or even a, a shoot first or a surprise strike. Both would allow him to kill this Battlefield Marine, and it would be a heavy loss for Michael in that situation. I think using Sabine's ability for Michael there wasn't great. I probably would have just played the Battlefield Marine and then taken initiative so that I could guarantee that first hit, even if my opponent ends up with some kind of counter. Could be wrong, though, and we'll have to see how it plays out. Mateusz really thinking about his really thinking about his resourcing here. Yeah, Wele on the Marine. So if if Michael had taken the initiative, he would have had the opportunity to uh if Michael had taken the initiative, he would have had the opportunity to make an attack there for three damage to his opponent's base. But because he used Sabine instead, that extra one damage to the base ended up actually costing him more damage than it gained him. And this is a important factor of playing Sabine. Um, you have to know when using your ability is going to be favorable and when it's going to be unfavorable. The Crafty Smuggler swings into the newly played Fighters for Freedom, dealing two damage and losing its shield. And this is sending up the Crafty Smuggler to trade with this unit next turn, a good trade for Mateusz. Uh, having your two drop take out your opponent's three drop is a good, uh, good spot to be, generally. We are up to four resources. It looks like there's a copy of K2SO in hand. We could also see two two drops played. I often actually think two two drops is a better play for Sabine than one larger unit. Um, probably the, the first action here, though, should be... Oh, okay, so that, that's reasonable. So we see um, Energy Conversion Lab used to ambush. Uh, so... K2SO ambushes the Crafty Smuggler, defeats it, and deals two damage to the base with Overwhelm, and then additionally one damage to the base from the Fighters for Freedom because uh, McCall just played, or Michael, uh, McCall, I'm sorry, uh, just played an aggression card. The uh, the extra damage that Fighters for Freedom can give you for playing aggression cards is a great way to get some more uh, great way to get some some more damage through. I personally don't love Fighters for Freedom just in terms of its its individual card efficiency, but you can get some good value from that ability. Ooh, and uh, we see a counter ECL use here. Uh, Mateusz using his energy conversion lab to bring in Boba Fett Disintegrator, ambush and defeat the uh, Fighters for Freedom before they get a chance to attack. Boba Disintegrator taking three damage, though. Uh, Sabine's ability used. I think we see a pass from Mateusz. Uh, Michael deploys Sabine, only to have her exhausted by a cartel spacer. So in this situation, I think... As Michael, you probably want to attack into Boba Disintegrator and clear him, with the big question being whether you want to do that with K2, which would do two Overwhelm, and I, I think you probably want to do it with K2, so that get well, you could also attack with Sabine, so that would so that would defeat Boba and deal one damage to base, but if you do it with K2, you get K2's when defeated trigger. So yeah, K2 attacks in, so that's going to be, K2 has four power and Overwhelm, so two damage uh, into Boba, two damage into the base from Overwhelm, and then K2's when defeated trigger adds three more damage to the base for a total of 10 damage now inflicted. Boba Fett himself hits the field. Probably this means that Sabine needs to swing before she misses her opportunity, as there are a lot of cards now that could clear Sabine with Boba. So a shoot first, a surprise strike, an overwhelming barrage, all would get Sabine off the board. And we do see uh, we do see the Sabine attack into base. Boba Fett throws out the uh, overwhelming barrage, clearing Sabine and buffing him to attack the base. Battlefield Marine now played. Boba can, of course, attack into this unit and defeat it easily. Um, Cartel Spacer swings two damage to Michael's base. 
we could see this um looks like he's kind of flooding the board here with smaller units a um a spec force soldier a one cost two two that can re temporarily remove sentinel hits the board um mateusz is opting to just keep pushing damage to base rather than having uh rather than having boba clear some units and the two players are now close in life total but michael deploys yet another unit the rebel pathfinder mateusz then taking the initiative a lot of small guys on board. Mateusz probably wants another overwhelming barrage, and he has it. Ouch. Brutal situation for Michael. Two of his units removed. Might have been better actually not to have played the Rebel Pathfinder and just taken the initiative instead in that scenario. Hard to say though. So here I think we'll see the here I think we'll see the fleet lieutenant sending the Spec Force soldier into the base for four. Um that's exactly right. So Mateusz's base is really getting low. Only eight HP left, and I do think there's a for a cause we uh, for a cause I believe in in the hand, which could easily be f another four damage to base, and would put Mateusz in range of various things. Of course, he could do six uh, eight damage to the base himself, which would put the rebel base into surprise strike range from Boba Fett. So this could be this could be very interesting. This round is the top thirty two. Incidentally, the previous matches that I showed from this tournament were from the uh, group stage, and then there was a cut where the top players from the different groups. Oh, okay. Matush is racing. Swings into the base again with Boba rather than opting to attack some of those smaller units. In this situation, I think as Michael, you fire off for a cause I believe in. If he sees another for a cause I believe in, he can very plausibly get the uh, get the win here by playing it on his next turn. There's other reach cards he could also see that if... Matush doesn't have a further answer to they will be no he just takes the initiative that is shocking to me he had the resources for the four cause I really don't know why he didn't play it maybe he's trying to set up a win this turn I'm not sure I'm I'm very surprised by that doesn't if he drew a rebel assault he would just win the game immediate no he wouldn't he'd be off by one um, well, but it doesn't really matter because he didn't draw it. I would really, really want to have played that for a cause I believe in, both to get use out of my resources and just to push the game closer to game over. Um, at this point, what can he do? I think he can attack with his fleet lieutenants. That's three to base, five HP left. Then if he plays for a cause and hits, uh, and hits four, it's one HP left, and he could clear the base with Sabine or maybe with the spec force soldier. I don't know. I'm I'm shocked that he didn't play that last turn. The filtering would have been super useful um, to try to get towards more reach cards. Um, but maybe he just really wanted the initiative here. He did end up kind of at a disadvantage earlier from not taking the initiative, so maybe he's focused there. Boba surprise strikes the base, and... Okay, I guess they call it there. I wonder if the base HP totals weren't updated. So he has 2 HP left on base in theory, but I guess he has nothing that closes the game, so he realizes it's over. Tough situation. I do think that uh, Michael taking the initiative earlier makes more sense in the event that we are not seeing that the uh, base HP totals were wrong and he actually had... Um, he actually had 7 HP such that Bobo would defeat it in one hit. It's just that I'm not actually sure anything he could draw would win the game at that point. Let me think about that. Yeah, I, th I think in that situation you would have wanted to play the Echo Base Defender. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Um, Echo Base Defender might have helped there, though, because if he had played the Echo Base Defender and still gotten the initiative, he can swing for 4 and then have a unit that the opponent has to deal with, taking at least one action probably to deal with it, and then the opportunity to attack with more units. Um, 
Interesting game. Uh, game one was not super close. Game two was a lot closer, but ultimately another win for Boba Fett in this tournament. I do think that the Boba Fett versus Green Sabine matchup is not as Boba skewed as some people say. I think that it is... I don't know exactly where I'd put the matchup. I think Boba is probably somewhat favored, but I don't think it's like you know, a crushing matchup for uh, in Boba's favor at all. Um, I do think it's possible that there are some other Sabine builds that might be able to do better. Could be wrong. Uh, you know, I posted recently about how I think that some of these Rebel aggro decks might want to be running Tarkin Town to counter the threat of Consortium Star Viper. Um, you can check out those videos on my channel if you like. But I think that's going to about do it for this video, and I do believe there are going to be some more matches to cover from Super Showdown Poznan. So stay tuned for, I'm just going to quickly look here. Yeah, there's at least one other match uh, still in this video, so uh, some more gameplay footage will be on the way later, as well as probably some more analysis type videos uh, later on as well. So thanks to y'all for watching, and we will be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. My apologies to the players for my undoubtedly very bad pronunciation of some of these uh, some of these names. I am uh, I am not an expert in this area. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I will catch y'all later.